when people talk about retro gaming, I immediately think of the SNES and all the amazing games I've played on it over the years. The SNES has an outrageous amount of masterpiece quality games. In this video, I will narrow down my personal picks for the 10 most playworthy SNES games. I will list these games in no particular order. And don't worry, I know I probably won't mention one or two of your favorite games, so I do apologize in advance. This is Super Game Ghost, and you're watching the top 10 must-play SNES games. Let's start. Number 10. The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past is an action-adventure video game first released in 1991. It was developed and published by Nintendo. The game is the third installment in the Legend of Zelda series and is widely regarded as one of the greatest and most influential video games of all time. Set in the land of Hyrule, A Link to the Past follows the story of a young boy named Link as he embarks on a quest to rescue Princess Zelda and defeat the evil sorcerer Ganon. The game features a return to a top-down perspective like the first Zelda game and combines exploration, puzzle solving, and action gameplay. One of the game's most iconic features is the parallel world mechanic, in which players can travel between the light and dark worlds. Each world has its own unique challenges and puzzles, and players must navigate between them to progress through the game. Upon release, A Link to the Past was met with critical acclaim and quickly recognized as a masterpiece. It currently holds a 95 out of 100 score on Metacritic. What more can I say about this game that hasn't already been said? Not only was this game a masterpiece in its own right, but it would also go on to influence countless other titles as well as its own sequels, which would continuously demonstrate some of the best storytelling and gameplay in the entire video game industry. Number 9 Super Metroid is a side-scrolling adventure game released in 1994. It was developed and published by Nintendo. Super Metroid is also the third installment in the Metroid series and is also widely regarded as one of the greatest video games of all time. Along with Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Super Metroid is known for establishing the Metroidvania genre of side-scrolling video games. In Super Metroid, players once again assume the role of Samus Aran, a bounty hunter equipped with a powerful exoskeleton suit. The game follows Samus as she travels to the planet Zebes to rescue a baby Metroid stolen by Mother Brain space pirates. Players must navigate through a large interconnected world, exploring caverns, ruins, and other environments while battling enemies and collecting power-ups. The gameplay of Super Metroid is focused primarily on exploration, with players gaining new abilities and weapons that allow them to access previously inaccessible areas. The game features non-linear progression, allowing players to explore the world at their own pace and tackle objectives in any order they choose. One of the most notable aspects of Super Metroid is its atmospheric storytelling and environmental design. The game creates a sense of isolation and mystery as players uncover the secrets of Zebes and unravel the true nature of the Metroid creatures. Super Metroid received widespread critical acclaim upon its release, praised for its tight controls, atmospheric presentation, and sense of immersion. This game has a stellar score of 97% on the now defunct GameRankings.com website. Number 8 Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Kong Quest is a platforming game released in 1995. It was developed by Rare and published by Nintendo. In Donkey Kong Country 2, players control Diddy Kong and his girlfriend Dixie Kong as they set out to rescue Donkey Kong who has been kidnapped by the villainous King K. Rule. The game features a similar gameplay style to its predecessor, with players navigating through a series of side-scrolling levels filled with enemies, obstacles, and collectibles. One of the features introduced in Diddy's Conquest is the ability to pick up and throw either character at enemies or into barrels. Like its predecessor, you are also able to switch between Diddy or Dixie. Diddy Kong is faster and can perform a cartwheel attack, while Dixie Kong can spin her ponytail to glide through the air and reach higher platforms. Diddy's Conquest received positive reviews upon its release and was praised for its graphics, level design, and gameplay mechanics. It is often considered one of the best platformers for the SNES, and is fondly remembered by fans for its challenging yet rewarding gameplay. It is also the 6th best selling SNES game with over 5 million units sold. It was quite hard to decide on a Donkey Kong game based on its playworthiness, so it really just came down to the fact that Diddy's Conquest has this musical masterpiece.
number 7. Mega Man X is a side-scrolling platformer released in 1993. It was developed and published by Capcom. In Mega Man X, players assume the role of X, a highly advanced robot created by the brilliant scientist Dr. Thomas Light. X is discovered by Dr. Kane, who reverse engineers X design to create a new generation of robots called Reploids. However, some Reploids turn rogue and become Mavericks, causing chaos and destruction. As X, players must navigate through 8 stages, each filled with enemies, obstacles, and hazards. Along the way, X can obtain new weapons and abilities by defeating powerful bosses. These weapons, called X-Buster upgrades, are essential for overcoming obstacles and defeating enemies in later stages. One of the standout features of Mega Man X is its tight and responsive gameplay. X has a wide range of movement abilities including dashing and wall jumping which adds a layer of versatility to the platforming experience. My all time favorite thing about this game is the music. This game has some of the most memorable scores on the SNES for me and I'm always thrilled to hear them. Mega Man X, like many of the other games on this list, received critical acclaim upon its release and was most notably praised for its graphics, sound design, and gameplay mechanics. Number 6 Super Ghouls and Ghosts is a side-scrolling platformer released in 1991. It was developed and published by Capcom. In Super Ghouls and Ghosts, players control the knight Arthur as he embarks on a quest to rescue Princess Prinprin from the demon lord Sardius. The game is known for its challenging gameplay and punishing difficulty, which has earned it a reputation as one of the toughest games on the SNES. Players must navigate through 8 levels filled with hordes of undead enemies, traps, and obstacles. Arthur starts the game equipped with the lance, but he can obtain additional weapons and armor upgrades by breaking open chests scattered throughout the levels. In each of the 8 levels known as quests, Arthur faces a time limit to battle ghouls before confronting a foul guardian protecting the gate to the next stage. The initial 5 quests, the dead place, the rotting sea, vermilion horror, the ghoul stomach, and the deep chill, Arthur must traverse diverse settings from graveyards and abandoned ships at sea to fiery caverns and icy landscapes. The last three quests, the Castle of the Emperor, Hallway of Ghouls, and the Throne Room are located within Sardius' fortress. The music in this game is also astounding and suits the overall atmosphere of each level perfectly. Despite its punishing difficulty, critics praise Super Ghouls and Ghosts for its graphics, level design, and soundtrack. The game is considered one of the best platforms on the SNES and remains a cult classic among fans of challenging retro games. Number 5 Super Castlevania 4 is a 2D platformer released in 1991. It was developed and published by Konami. In Super Castlevania 4, players assume the role of Simon Belmont, a vampire hunter on a quest to defeat the evil Count Dracula and rid the world of his curse. The game features side-scrolling gameplay with players navigating through various levels filled with enemies, traps, and obstacles. The game offers enhanced graphics and sound compared to its NES predecessors and it takes full advantage of the SNES hardware, featuring detailed sprites, smooth animations, and music that helps set the tone for the gothic horror-inspired levels. Super Castlevania 4 also introduced several gameplay enhancements and mechanics not present in previous Castlevania games. For example, players have greater control over Simon's whip, allowing them to swing it in multiple directions and use it as a grappling hook to swing across gaps. Additionally, Simon can perform a variety of new moves such as a whip spin attack and the ability to hold his whip in place to block projectiles. Castlevania 4 received critical acclaim upon its release, praised for its graphics, gameplay, and it is often regarded as one of the best games of the Castlevania series and a classic of the platforming genre. Number 4 Seiken Densetsu 3, also known as Trials of Mana in the West, is an RPG released in 1995. It was developed and published by Square. Seiken Densetsu 3 is the sequel to Seiken Densetsu 2, which is known as Secrets of Mana outside of Japan, and is set in the same universe as its predecessor. The game features a similar real-time battle system where players control a party of characters who engage in combat with enemies in real-time. One of the most notable features of Seiken Densetsu 3 is its class system, which allows players to choose different classes for each character at specific points in the game. Each class has its own unique abilities, strengths, and weaknesses, allowing for a high degree of customization and strategic depth. The game follows the story of six playable characters, each with their own personal motivations and storylines. 
Depending on the characters chosen at the beginning of the game, players will experience different perspectives of the overarching narrative as they journey across the world to prevent the resurrection of the god beasts, powerful elemental spirits that threaten to plunge the world into chaos. This game was not released outside of Japan, so there's really only a handful of ways to experience it in its original form on the SNES. Seiken Densetsu 3 received predominantly positive reviews upon its release in Japan and was praised for its graphics, music, gameplay mechanics, and deep storytelling. However, its lack of an official localization outside of Japan meant that players in other regions were unable to experience the game until 2020 when it was remade in 3D for the Switch, PS4, and PC. Number 3 Demon's Crest is an action platform released in 1994. It was developed and published by Capcom. In Demon's Crest, players control Firebrand, a demon who seeks to obtain the six magical stones known as the Crests, which are scattered across the world. Each crest grants Firebrand new abilities and powers, allowing him to access new areas and overcome other obstacles. The game features non-linear gameplay with players able to explore a vast interconnected world filled with secrets, hidden passages, and challenging enemies. Players must use Firebrand's abilities such as Flight and Fire Breath to navigate through levels and defeat enemies. Demon's Crest is known for its atmospheric presentation with detailed graphics and haunting music that help create a dark and foreboding atmosphere. The game's art style and character design are also praised for their unique and memorable visuals. Despite its relatively low sales, Demon Crest has since gained a cult following and is fondly remembered as one of the standout titles on the SNES. Its unique gameplay mechanics and multiple endings continue to make it a beloved classic among fans of action platformers and retro gaming. Number 2 Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island is a 2D platformer released in 1995. It was developed and published by Nintendo. In Yoshi's Island, players control various colored Yoshis as they embark on a quest to reunite baby Mario with baby Luigi. They must rescue baby Luigi from the clutches of Kamek, a magic Koopa who has kidnapped the infant Mario brother. The game takes place across six worlds, each containing several levels filled with enemies, puzzles, and obstacles. One of the defining features of Yoshi's Island is its unique art style, which uses hand-drawn graphics and colorful visuals reminiscent of a children's storybook. This art style, along with the game's whimsical music and sound effects, creates a charming and inviting atmosphere that sets it apart from other platformers of its time. Gameplay in Yoshi's Island differs from traditional Mario games in several ways. Instead of controlling Mario directly, players control a Yoshi who carries a baby Mario on his back. Baby Mario will float in a bubble if Yoshi is hit by an enemy, and players must quickly recover him before a timer runs out. The game also introduces new gameplay mechanics such as Yoshi's ability to swallow enemies and turn them into eggs, which can then be thrown to defeat enemies or solve puzzles. Yoshi's Island was critically acclaimed upon release and was praised for its innovative gameplay, charming visuals, and creative level design. Number 1 Chrono Trigger is an RPG released in 1995. It was developed and published by Square. The game follows the story of a group of adventurers who travel through time to prevent a global catastrophe. Players assume the role of Chrono, a young adventurer who becomes entangled in a quest to save the world after encountering a mysterious girl named Marl. Along the way, Chrono is joined by a diverse cast of characters including Luca, Frog, Robo, Isla, and Magus. Chrono Trigger is known for its innovative gameplay mechanics and storytelling. One of the most notable features of the game is its active time battle system, which blends turn-based combat with real-time elements. Players must strategically manage their party's actions and abilities in battle, taking advantage of each character's strengths and weaknesses to defeat enemies and bosses. Another standout feature of Chrono Trigger is its time travel mechanic, which allows players to explore different eras in the game's world, ranging from prehistoric times to post-apocalyptic future. The choices players make throughout their journey have direct impacts on the game's branching narrative and multiple endings. Chrono Trigger soundtrack has got to be one of my all-time favorites, and it is definitely one of the best collections of music for the SNES. Upon its debut, Chrono Trigger garnered extensive critical praise lauded for its captivating narrative, unforgettable characters, and inventive gameplay features. 
The game won many accolades and is frequently hailed as one of the greatest video games ever created. Also, the artwork for Chrono Trigger was done by the late, great Akira Toriyama. His signature style of artwork is present throughout the game and the PS1 re-release even had entire cutscenes done by Akira Toriyama's Bird Studio.